A little while ago, somebody asked if I could show all the mods I have in my Sims 2 game. My first reaction was to say, no, 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 don't make me look in my downloads folder, that's the worst place. But I thought about it a bit more and I think I'm going to do it and that's what this video is about. I'm going to show you as best I can and describe where I can't show all the mods I have working in my Sims 2 game. I don't change my downloads around, the mods I have in my Pleasant View are the same as I have in my Build the City challenge, it's always the same. So I've added because of that challenge and they now just run in my Pleasant View because that's the way uh, I work. I'm going to take you through the mods, we'll go into one of the families, a fairly peaceful family that can run in the background and I will talk you through all the mods I have in my Sims 2 save. Let's get into it. So we're going to load into the Lothario family, well, this is one of the Lothario families in my uh, Pleasant View. Uh, Sienna and Ross, they're a lovely couple. They have a biological son and an adopted daughter, and so we're just going to see how they get on as we, uh, or as I, tell you all about my mods. So I'm going to break this up roughly into sections, and I should say as well, as best I can, all the links are going to be in the description box below. I hope so. Some of them I was looking through the list and I don't, I tried to find them, I couldn't. So as best as I can, whatever is available is going to be down below. So you can add whatever you want to your game. If you like the look of it, please do go ahead and do that. So the first section I'm going to go through is mods that are always working. So things that are running in the background or change the sort of basic level of the game to an extent where it doesn't matter that it's happening. It's just always going to be uh, on the go. Uh, the first of those is probably the most common, well-known uh, mod of uh, The Sims 2, which is ACR or Autonomous Casual Romance. That's always running in my hoods. I set it up with the um, individual sim, if I can find them here. So all you do is click on the sim choose adjust and then casual romance and if you haven't set it up you get the option to add it to your hood and it creates it for everybody uh, but I always have an adjuster on the lot so it's always running always active things like booty calls flirtation by autonomously autonomous romance as it's called will happen because of this mod and I love it it's one of my favorites uh, the next thing I have always running is that I have an age span mod so I've changed the ages of my sims so they are they get to live a lot longer than base game or unmodded sims would get to live uh, that goes from the babies up to the elders everyone gets a bit longer i use Fano's let kids be kids mod or let children be children i think it's called and that both adjusts the age span and adds some holidays i think they get to have a day off in winter and in uh and in summer too i think there's a, a summer holiday that's built into it i did realize that i thought the mods had adjusted babies down to two days and it really hadn't babies were about five days that they were running so i've since fixed that so the babies are now back to two days and adults get a little bit longer because my ages were weirdly out of sync but i now know why i do if i'm not recording and actually i've left it in today because i forgot to take it out i normally have an anti-sensor mod just so i can see all my sims uh, all the time i have tattoos so i like to be able to see them that's what i do it's what i choose to, how i choose to play generally um and so yeah that's a fairly common one but that's one that i do take out when i'm recording especially in haven Rock. Uh, I have a mod that lets young adults keep their loves, so um, when they go from teenagers to young adults in college, I think the original game, that gets taken away, they don't translate their crushes or their loves over to that age stand. They do with the, my game now. I'm not really sure how much I need it or use it, um, but I do have teens falling in love, so it's, not, it's good to have, it's good to be there. A recent addition to my game is a mod called Personality Please. Uh, in the vanilla game, your sim's genetic personalities are decided by the parents. So based on what the parents' uh, genetic personality points are, decides how the kids will look. So we have uh, Ross and uh, Sienna here. And then their son, Riley, as you can see, is very similar. He's a, within a few points of his father, a good blend of his parents, essentially. Personality, please, adjust that a little bit. It tweaks it. So it hasn't really taken effect yet. So um, Riley hasn't had that um, benefit. But for babies born at the moment in my game, there's a chance they'll get more personality points or just kind of rogue personality points that aren't necessarily about their parents. It's just going to be personality points that are assigned a bit more randomly to give you a bit more flavour and not have necessarily like and not have like, clones of people throughout your hood. Uh, also, in terms of changing how the personality works, a recent addition from Bella Dover, I saw it in her videos, is um, removing the zodiac signs from the chemistry system. I'm not a zodiac person. I don't really. Not that I don't believe it, but I don't follow it or kind of have too much interest in it. So I wasn't really paying attention to how it was affecting my Sims um, 
romances and chemistries. Um, so I took it out. It's a great mod. It's quite a global change of how the chemistry system works. And I like it. It didn't affect my existing chemistries too much. But as I mean, I'm just happier with it not being in the system as a as an affecting factor. I had the same thing with uh, person with aspiration. I don't think that's a zodiac. I just think that's not. It's an interesting factor, but not kind of a key personality one for me. I'd rather have it be a bit more random. I thought I'd wait for daylight to make a bit more sense. Uh, so the next mod I have is the removal of the 20,000 simoleon handout that sims get when they move out. So when they become a sim by themselves in the sim bin, uh, before they move into a household, they get 20,000 simoleons just by default. I've removed that. I like it to make my gameplay a little bit harder, a bit more challenging. The sims have to work a bit more to get what they want. And I can rely on family members, family members sending out funds, maybe their university... Um, tuition, that kind of thing, they're the, um, their awards from university. I like having a bit more of a money-based challenge because I do find that the money can add up really quickly. I did a lot of work a few months ago to kind of really bring down everyone's funds and make everyone a little bit more evenly spaced. So when they do get those big payouts, it's really worth the pile. Also in the kind of the vein of money, I have modded out Rod Humble. I'm very sorry, Rod. <laughs> you were just giving people computers for no reason and whenever they wanted it. Um, oh, please go to work, Sienna, because that's really loud. So yes, I modded out Rod Humble. He doesn't show up with his free computers. That's just not available or an option for him or for anyone in this game to get a free computer. Um, and that's I'm pretty happy with that. It's a good, good choice. The only thing it does mean is I don't get The Sims 3, a copy of that by um, just just for getting the computer. You get a copy of The Sims 3 with it because it was advertising that The Sims 3 was coming out. Um, so you, uh, there's mods where you can buy that back, but enough of my households have it that I'm, I'm actually okay at the moment with not everyone having The Sims 3. Fantastic game though it is. Uh, I also have a mod that I showed in my university uh, gameplay video, which means I've made university shorter. So university is modded. It's not a million days long anymore. It's just a very short period of time. It's about seven days, I think, compared to so many it used to be. And that helps it keep in line with my um, with my neighbourhood and the kind of my rotations, keeps everything in line, and also makes me more likely to play university because it's less of a big commitment. When it's as long as it is, I've got lots and lots of sims in university, I think I would just I'd go, I'd go mental, I think. So having it be a bit shorter, more controlled, is really helpful for me. Also to go along with that, I have degree changes. So um, this mod lets you, I think it's by Sijon, this mod lets you... Oh, sorry, this mod changes how the degrees work and what jobs they link back to. That means that when your sim gets... Um, their particular degree it makes a bit more sense which jobs they can get boosts in based on that degree and it also brings the skill points in line with a short university span so if you have a short university mod do get the degree changed as well and i will link that of course below just it makes everything work together and be a bit more sensible in terms of the skills they're getting a mod that's very recent to me but is actually very very old is uh, stair fixes if you play The Sims 2, you may have realized or noticed or been really annoyed by the fact that sims can't cross each other on the stairs or can't can't go up the stairs two at a time if one's already on there then nobody else can follow and they get shouty and stomp their feet and just get really annoyed uh, i think it's the modular stair fixes it means that everyone can go up and down as much as they like nobody gets angry or upset uh, and it's fantastic it just means it's a bit it's a bit of sanity in the sims some mods are to make things more fun or just cooler or different some mods really fix what the gameplay was lacking and this is one of those that now i have it i will never get rid of it I also have the Sims in rent, so the money management is a big part of my of my game, and I do have cheaper um, rents. So people that do end up renting because they haven't got the funds to move into a house, they get cheaper rent. They don't have to pay as much every week in terms of the place they're living in. It just makes some of those really nice apartments a bit more affordable. More of my Sims can move into them, and I just find that to be really useful uh, in terms of get that more realistic gameplay. The renting is cheap, it's fun to do, um, and people can do it and uh, save up to move to their dream homes. Uh, the next few mods are all going to be about kind of the children, pregnancy, childbirth, all that kind of thing. And the first of those is equal genetics. I think Ross might be a good example of that. So in the vanilla game, every sim has two genes. So they have a dominant and a recessive gene. It's just like real life. It's incredibly cool. <laughs> Something I really miss from other games is this kind of very fixed genetic system. However, what that means is in the, in the vanilla game, Black hair and brown hair are dominant. Red and blonde hair are recessive. So if you have a parent with black hair, the baby will have black hair because it will get at least one gene that is dominant, that is black, and that will, in most cases anyway, it will make it harder for the recessive genes to express themselves. Obviously, once they get two genes, 
it's fine, things start to come out. With Pleasant View, so many of the Sims have black or brown hair that it means there's tons of dominant genes flying about. And my whole first generation seemed to have black hair, brown hair, no matter what I did, because they because when they're made, they have black black rather than black blonde, for example. It might be different with some Sims, but it seemed to me like everyone was pretty heavily with the dominant genes and I wasn't getting much variation. Equal genetics means that that takes out the dominant and recessive element. You still get two genes per baby, so they get one from the parents, one from each parent to kind of decide what their genetics will be. A Sim has a black-haired parent and a blonde-haired parent, it's equally likely that they will get black or blonde hair or whatever their other recessive genes were. They, whatever's not expressed, those are still available to be passed on. It just makes things a bit more randomised, I think. Sometimes I think it doesn't quite make sense, but I really do like having it in the game. And I've had that for ages, ever since my first generation of Pleasant View. I had the hair, same genetics uh, added in. I really like it. Only recently I realised at the time there was no equality between eye colours. So no matter what your eye colours were, um, brown and dark blue are dominant. Grey, light grey, grey, light blue and green are recessive. And there was just no way of getting around that. So I know they're not available. So I didn't have a way to make sure that those other colours express themselves. And I love grey eyes. Quite often I have grey eyes on my sips. You'll see it quite a lot in Haven Rock, that it's a colour I go to quite often. But fairly recently, to me, I found that that has been fixed. There is an equal genetics mod for eyes as well, which is so cool. So I have both of those installed. So my genes, even though... Oh, my cat grew up. Congratulations, bonkers. You look cool. <laughs> so yeah, so um, I really like it. I like having those genes being equal. You still have that genetic mix of the dominant and recessive, or the expressed and the unexpressed gene being in that sim's DNA, which is amazing. Uh, but there's a bit more variety and a bit more randomness, which I enjoy. Uh, also in the kind of baby section, uh, again a recent addition to, for me are uh, the miscarriage chance mods and the death in childbirth mods. They're very recent, I don't know if I'll keep them long term, I think the cats are fighting. Um, the death in childbirth has given me some good drama recently, I've had I've got a single parent in Pleasant View because uh, his wife passed away and that's just been the story that, that I'm telling now, which I wouldn't have done otherwise, so it does add some variety. And the miscarriages, if you don't manage their needs, I've got the version where if you don't manage their needs there is a greater chance of miscarriage. So it's interesting, it's happened in my Haven Rock um, Build City Challenge, my Elimination Big Brother Challenge, um, and I think in Pleasant View, potentially, maybe not as much. It, it just, again, adds a bit more variety, adds some different things that are going on. Um, so it might not be for you, you might not want to have that chance in your game and that is absolutely fine. I guess that's why it's not in the vanilla game. Uh, but I'm enjoying it for now. It's one I may take out if I get a bit traumatised. <laughs> we'll see. If the babies do get born and the parents do survive, one of my oldest mods in my game is the No Baby Bothering, Leave Babies Alone mod by Viscardo. It just reduces the amount that parents will go and cuddle or bottle feed or anything, interact with the babies in their cribs. It just makes life easier. It's alright, calm down. Let them lie there. <laughs> so the mod helps them do that. So I like that one. When they grow up and they become toddlers, um, I have a mod that lets them climb out of their cots. Super useful. They can do it. It's built into the game that um, toddlers with, I think, high playfulness and the walking skill will be able to get themselves out of, um, of their own cots. That's just part of it. Um, uh, they'll be able to get themselves out of their own cots. That's just part of the game. It's really, it's really cool, but it's kind of quite rare, uh, I think, to actually see it happen. Um, with this mod, they can do it any time from when they become toddlers. There's no requirements. It's just something they can do. It just, again, helps keep life a bit easier. They will get out of their cots, play with toys. They can keep themselves entertained. Um, so it's just a bit of a life, quality of life improvement that I do recommend. Uh, one that I've had for ages, a toddler kind of quality of life uh, situation, is a vanilla game when a toddler uses the potty, someone has to empty it out before it can be used again. Totally fine in real life. It makes perfect sense. You don't want to keep using a dirty potty. In The Sims, it becomes a little bit annoying because when you're in the thick of trying to get them to use the potty, potty train, feed them, play with them, whatever you're doing, if you then can't potty train them there and then because it's full, and it just slows things down, it gets a bit annoying. That's one I've had out for ages. The potty can be reused. They can still they can still clean it, it can still be autonomously emptied out. That is absolutely fine, um, but it's not a requirement anymore. And I do like that for making toddlers just a bit more user-friendly <laughs> and uh, fun to play. So those are, I think, <laughs> all of my sort of ongoing mods. And I'm not including bug fixes or cor corruption fixes, mainly because I didn't have no one link on death until pretty recently. So yeah, I'm not including kind of corruption fixes or a lot of the Pescado mods. I do have them. 
they've been in there for a very long time although i didn't have no one link on death i thought i had it but i didn't until quite recently um so i'm not quite sure what's in there that would involve me digging through my folder a bit more than i have done it's nothing that's really kind of active follow the list of corruption fixes you must have mods and you'll get the things you need and assume i have them as well next section of mods is thinking about passive mods or mods that are always ready to work they're ready to go whenever i need them but they're not kind of in the background essentially I'm going to start with one of my really key fixes, which is putting away leftovers as single plates. It seems so simple. Uh, when Sims do serve full meals, I can make Sienna cook now. So when Sims cook full meals, it becomes a group meal, then they take their own single plates. If they put that group serving into the fridge in the vanilla game, it goes away as a group meal. So to eat it again, you have to pull the whole group meal out and everyone take a plate again or whatever's left over. That might just be one plate. With the put away as single servings, incredibly simple. You can click on the group meal, choose put away as single servings, and then everyone can pick one dish whenever they need it. It just, so simple, so life-saving. <laughs> One of my oldest mods, as I say. I kind of have two phases of mods in my Sims history. Um, from when I first started playing the Ultimate Collection and I got kind of all the mods I knew about, kind of the corruption fixes, most of them, um, ACR, these little uh, irritation fixes that I'd seen and kind of knew about from reading life journals back in the day, that kind of thing, I put those in. Then my more recent set are more kind of in-depth, more technical, because getting it in become more active in the sims communities show me so many more mods i could be using and so some things are newer because i found them through this community some are older because i've just they were annoyances i found at the time years ago and i've got the mods to fix those out so yeah they can put leftovers away as single plates um the gusty up mod again is pretty new to me uh this mod i can choose to kind of bypass buying clothes going to the dresser to get changed check using the mirror to um change appearance all of that can be used with the gussy up interaction you can change everything you can buy jewelry you can buy stuff and you don't actually get charged it's not actually a um you don't lose money doing it that way it's a free new outfit basically i didn't get it for a long time because i do really like going to the clothes shop to buy clothes in the sims 2 it's kind of been a little ritual for me for ages on the times when i want to just kind of give them a quick makeover i find it much easier now than anything else um for when they roll wants to go and buy clothes or if i think they need to buy a new outfit for something special then i still go to the shop and buy it because i really love that function uh, but gusty up is now my kind of first makeover a uh, friendly life stage i do it through gusty up and i found that really very very helpful do you take your reminder yes you do i also do have an interaction added fairly recently i thought i had it again but i didn't and uh, let's find it here oh they're married so they won't show up i do have a mod for as to just be friends so that will remove any romantic um flags from the couple so it will take off crushes and love helpful if you need to break up an affair that's going on and just need to kind of remove those flags i'll be doing that with um, a particular family where someone's been left over as a romance that they shouldn't be anymore and it then means they don't automatically go back to affectionate things if you don't want them to I have unlocked uh, one of the other hidden interactions, a bit like um, climbing out of the cart. One of those is Lecture. So I think it's under here. Uh, Sims lecture other Sims or children when they mess up their homework or don't go to school, miss school, for example, and they do it autonomously and you can't cancel it and they just go and have a bit of a shout. I think it's quite helpful to have negative interactions available um, when you might need them, a bit like breaking up or asking to just be friends. Having the lecture option there, I do find pretty helpful maybe for storytelling purposes or to bring down relationships that have got too high or just because it makes sense that they've done something the parents going to scold them for uh, i like having that there it's quite a good good addition in my life, in my opinion for photographs i have the look at me mods let's go find riley give me an example and this means that when um he won't break his neck to do it but when he has a moment he will look at me look at me riley there it is. <laughs> Only slightly creepy, so that's good. Um, helpful if you're taking screenshots or pictures to have those things available to you. A big kind of overhaul mod that I've used recently is um, the Community Time Project. It's one that I was a bit nervous about for a long time. I think it was in development for a lot of the kind of early time I was playing The Sims 2. Um, so it was one of those use your own risk kind of mods. It's not complete, it's not been finished. And I guess it probably never will be. I think it's stopped development now but it works just fine for me the only things that go wrong are sometimes you don't get the time taken away from you the community time mod makes it so that when a sim goes to a community lot time and they come back sorry time doesn't just reset so they don't leave at nine and come back at nine despite being away for six hours 
it will keep them off the lot for those six hours. So when you, they come back, they've already spent that time with the lot, they don't get to do it twice. I used to find that playing community lots in this Pleasant View in particular wouldn't do it as much very often because I would have to play twice as long <laughs> with that sim, which would make my rotations go longer, which made me just less likely to play it because it's a big hood, I've got lots of things to get through. Um, going to community lots didn't seem that valuable use of the time. Now I love it, I love going to community lots, I love group outings, going to downtown, leaving the house whenever I can, it's fantastic, it's a really good use and also very helpful for my build city challenge to have um, that time used up so I haven't got to edit a double video essentially of what they did when they left and when they came back and had exactly the same time again. I do recommend it, I think it's a lot of fun, uh, it makes a good compromise between the closed and open world that the Sims has. Uh, I've switched households for this mod because it is one of the cutest. Um, vanilla puppies and kittens in The Sims 2 don't show their colours or their coat markings until they grow up. This mod lets you see it when they're tiny so they get born with their colours. Um, so I think in vanilla these would have been two white and one black puppy but you can see their little eye, um, ear markings, nose markings, paw prints. It just gives the puppies and kittens so much more personality just knowing what they're going to be, or a little bit what they're going to be like when they grow up. Um, I just think it's one of the cutest innovations in The Sims 2. I love it so much and uh, we'll never get rid of it. So while I'm here, we're going to move on to the next section of mods, which is item mods. Very handily, the bat box is here already. Now these are mods that exist as items generally found in the miscellaneous, miscellaneous section of your Sims 2 catalogue in Build and Buy mode. The bat box is a very famous one. This is around debugging. You've got options around resetting the... Um, we roll on the pacifier to fix firstborn syndrome, to fix tons of things. Uh, let me just show you some options here. You can nuke things, you can fix things, you can find, you can kind of um, clear out your memory of different sims. Um, you can clear trash, for example. 86 trash memories deleted. I hope that was a good thing to do. I'm never quite sure what it's doing, but it is a very well respected and regarded mod. Uh, you can get a reskin for it where it's a little bar of flowers, a bit prettier, but I like knowing that it's there and what it looks like, and I could just delete it if I don't need it uh, and take it off the lot. But it's there, it's working, if I do need it. Uh, ACR is also an item. It makes a little um, item you can change the model of, but it doesn't appear in the catalogue. You have to generate it from um, the mod itself if on a sim, so it's not included in this section. Uh, another mod I generally have on every lot is my Sim Blender. This is another fixed base mod. This lets you do a ton of things with your Sims, whether you're teleporting Sims in from outside the household you just wanted to be into in, on your lot at the moment. You can make Sims active Sims. You can fix their wants, re-roll their wants, cycle their lifetime wants, add skill points. I quite like the new Sims or kind of blank Sims to add the random set of skills that gives me all personality. So you know they've had a lifetime of gaining skills before they come into your household. It can be quite helpful uh, if you do have a blank sim. And there's things you can adjust in here. You can change relationships. You can make people townies from this one as well. If you create townies, move them into your neighbourhood, make them all townies from the uh, sim blender, then they're in your hood and they're not in an active household. Really, really helpful. Uh, very classic mod as well. Been in my game since the start. A more recent addition is this checkbook. This is by... Oh, on a table, sorry. Uh, is a more recent addition is uh, Sim Wardrobe's checkbook. This I got in for my Builder City Challenge, so Sims can write each other checks and share money around the neighbourhood if I remember to do it, of course. Um, this is a very old mod. I had to get this from a, an archive site, basically, from a bunch of... You can download all Sim Wardrobe's mods in one file. Go through there. There's some interesting stuff that you can find in the file. And, uh, yeah, the checkbook's one of them. You just assign the Sim that's going to... Or how much they're going to pay, who you're going to pay it to, and then they're able to write it and send it out. Or when you move back to that paid Sims household, the check is in their inventory, and you could just cash it and use it right away. Another very helpful mod is the visitor controller. This can set Sims that can appear on your lot, whether you're going to ban certain kinds of Sims, certain whole categories, basically career-based banning. You can really control who shows up on your lot. Very helpful for community lots if you want to set, say, it's a gay bar, and so you don't want a straight Sim showing up. You can do it with this. It also helpful to ban. Characters you might not like, the NPCs, like the, um, I'm trying to think of the, well, you can ban all annoying, which is quite helpful. But if you want to get rid of, say, the charlatan or the witches so they don't slow down your lots, this is a helpful thing to do. University, you could ban the mascots, for example, they do turn up and make a mess. So, a useful mod to have and to play that with. Uh, this mod, this very fun football with a, um, <laughs> a, mortar, a mortarboard, is that what it's called? On its head, it's graduating. Um, this is a character generator, so if you want to create, or when I want to create, um, 
So if you want to create townies for your save, this mod will let you do it. You can create them by their age, by their genetics, um, by gender, and it will just generate a random number. It will generate, or you can specify how many, how, what number you want to add to your, to your save. And they're townies, so they'll show up around and about. I use it in Haven Rock, which is pretty good. It's a good thing to be able to pop at your townies and not have the kind of baseline townies you get in um, vanilla gameplay, particularly if you've installed a clean hood. You can add your own townies in, they'll randomise their names from your name file as well. Uh, the other mod that has exactly the same model <laughs> is the Hood Checker. Um, so, using hoods can be a bit tricky, it's a lot inspector. Um, you just have to hold him, you don't have to do anything, you know, don't have to place it actually to be able to know. I think it can check for problems with the, with the hood if there's things attached to it. Um, here you know, it looks for known problems. It's helpful if you're deleting lots and you want to know that there's nothing left in there to get rid of. Uh, but he said this lot saved to delete and it's full of sims, so I probably wouldn't delete it. Um, so, who knows? I like to have it around just for a bit of peace of mind. A lot of the sims too is, you know, prayer, really. <laughs> so it's good to have it around there, just so I know. I've got a bit of peace of mind about what I'm going to delete. I also use quite often... Uh, it's also sim wardrobe. This is the season and weather controller. So this can change the season. Uh, this helps bring your sims in line with your rotation if you're playing rotationally. So you can just say, which season is it? The number corresponds to the number on the dial. So one for me is spring. Yours could be different, but that's how it works on the count. So you just set the season. Season length actually sets... Yeah, you can make your seasons longer, I guess. Um, if you want to stay in summer forever, which, you know, might be something you want to do. Uh, I also have... Similar to... Um, ACR, it comes out as a stack of uh, yellow pages and archaic, so like an archaic thing now, it's like a floppy disk. It's who has this? But anyway, this lets you do a lot of things around university, um, such so as adding people to secret societies. This is helpful because the my shortened university in particular, you can't necessarily do everything in one go because there's less time. So if I just want someone to be in the secret society, I can do that. If I want to change um, their skill points, I can do if I'm feeling a bit cheaty or once buying them just a phone is pretty good <laughs> if you don't want to go out to the shop just give them a phone it's pretty great also for children you can add the school type so i can change them from public to private school i tend to get the headmaster over for the first child in the household i do the whole scenario for every child after that if any more are born younger and weren't there for that initial headmaster test i'll use this mod to put them in private school because it's just too much hassle to do it every single time uh, because that's what would happen if you get one kid into private school the rest of them are going to get in you're already legacy at that point i also have Sai john's pizza box this is one that confuses me i forget which one this is um yeah it's like another de debugging option you can get reports about motifs and stuff like that uh, if you want actual numbers about things pretty helpful and there's another one that's similar that's um money based so i'll show that in a second so yeah, the money-based one is the loan jar. Is that also Sajon? I went over. I think it might be Sajon. The link will be in the description below, so you'll see who it actually is. Uh, this lets your sims take out loans, and it will track on the loan jar what they've taken out. So there's no loan currently for um, Daniel Dreamer here, or Ryan. Yeah, Daniel Dreamer. He has no loan, but if he did, I'd be able to see the total amount, uh, and it will come with a little popper box on the side, just like. Oh, thank you, puppy. So yeah, you can see in that how much they have left to pay. You can also set the interest rates for the actual loan. And also global billing. This helps for controlling, again, how much money your sims have. I find this very helpful. I think level zero is Max's original, and you go up from there. I might be wrong, I'll double check that. Um, but it, either way, you're tweaking the amount of the bills. So when those bills show up, how much they're going to be based on your lot, your funds, the amount of furniture you have will change. And it's quite helpful for controlling that. I did have uh, billing turned up to I think four or five for a while, just that was my effort to bring everyone's funds down a bit, a bit more realistic, a bit more of a struggle, uh, but now they're back down to two, which I'm finding quite a quite good balance. So I'll, I'll leave it there for a while and then see how we get on. I also have this item, I've never actually been brave enough to get it out uh, and used by a sim. <laughs> this is a great big pair of scissors. I think this is actually a store item. Yeah, the runs with scissors playset by ADD. I think they just die if they use it, which is why I've never actually made anyone run with scissors. But you can download store objects for The Sims 2, and I think this was one of them. And they just said, run with scissors, see what happens. Um, as we all know, we shouldn't do that. So that's a fun one. Well, not fun for The Sims, but fun for me. I also have a couple of time-based mods uh, in this folder. So I can only see this one, this is the freezer clock. 
Uh, so I can freeze one sim, I can freeze all of time. Again, helpful for photographs. Uh, and I'm going to get a mod for slowing down time overall for playing schools, which I've seen both Annie Bats and Tiadic use, uh, which I think I'll want when I'm playing schools in Haven Rock. Uh, but this one's just helpful for a kind of one time freeze uh, of one sim or several. The other fun mod that I have here are the tattoo boxes and posters. I think I'm supposed to be able to kind of consolidate these down to one mesh, but, but I haven't, so apologies. A lot of these are by DD. Um, I think some are by, yeah, Platinum Aspiration. And they're just really, really good. It really adds a lot to the game. There's no tattoos in the vanilla game of The Sims 2. Just don't have them. Um, but these mods, all you do is place the item, click on it, and the tattoo you want, just select it and it will add it onto the sim. Uh, you can remove it if you want to, but you can also just delete the box once it's placed and it will then be saved to that sim forever. They now have a tattoo. So I really like having that to add some more personality and differentiate my sims and I like to do kind of story-based tattoos as well. If a parent dies when they're quite young, I have a whole family, the Newsons all got the same tattoo when um, Ginger died because she meant so much to them all. So it's quite a good way of having extra storytelling and just fun different looking sims as well. I have a few other item-based mods that I will show you. Um, the first is Monique's computer, hacked computer. Do I have one of those lots? I should do. Oh yeah, here it is. So Monique's computer gives you so many more options on the computer than you do in the vanilla game. You can bank online, which is really fun. You can write articles for money and skill points. You can order any of the items that are deliverable by the phone from the computer, which just makes sense because it is now, of course, the year 2023 and not 2004 anymore. You can save for badges, which is pretty great. Um, shop online, and all your normal banking, uh, sorry, all your normal, normal computer stuff is here as well. But you do just get enhanced options that you can look through, um, which I think is really, really helpful. I also added for my Build a City challenge. Let's find it. Uh, the woodworking bench from The Sims 4. So it's a 4 to 2 conversion and it gives you a whole woodworking skill. It's a mechanical skill. It's based on the, mecha it's based on the mechanical skill. So they, they build mechanical while doing it. But it just means they can make a whole ton of items that are included with the item with the object as well. It's such a cool mod. Um, I have loved using it in Haven Rock. I love using it. I've got at least one sim that uses it in Pleasant View as well. It's just fun to have. It's an extra hobby, an extra way to pass their time or kind of build their skills. Um, it's my favorite kind of thing in the game. I also have installed the fish packing station um, by also by Sim Wardrobe um, with some recolors, uh, and I've never had a chance, or I haven't ever caught enough fish to use it. So I thought it'd be a great idea for Haven Rock. I also was pretty sure I installed the fruit one that was for Eloise. I thought that'd be great as well, but I can't find it in the uh, in the in the catalogue. So um, it should be in there, but it doesn't seem to be. So that's. Um, my fault, I think. So the last set of mods I have are community lot based ones. Um, the community lot mods, maybe you don't exercise yourself to death there, Landon. Why don't we just look, take care of your needs for a second? Yeah, so community lot based mods um, are a bit hard to show. There is a feature in the vanilla game where Sims, could you turn that off for me please? So yeah, there's a feature in the vanilla game where Sims arriving at a community lot will lose like half their bladder motive. No matter how they left, they'll turn up with less bladder to drive them to use the lot, I think, and to make them do stuff. Just kind of annoying. I've taken that out so their bladder stays as high as it was when they left. Just makes life easier. Also, you'll have seen in my Haven Rock series, um, there is now a payable buffet. So when you have the buffet on a community lot, Sims can pay for it. So they actually give you money to take your turkey legs, which I think is reasonable. Uh, and also a really cool pizza buffet. So as well as having the normal buffet food, they can buy slices of pizza, which is just super great. Uh, I also, <laughs> due to a bad experience in my Builder City Challenge, uh, found a mod that stops Sims complaining if there's a dirty dish on the community lot. So if you're running a restaurant, for example, or a pub, as I am in Haven Rock, um, they get really, really agitated if there's an, a dirty dish after a second. So I've modded that out because that was really winding me up and making me not want to play. And that's kind of a good reason to get a mod, I think, is um, so you play more, so you have more time and more interest in the game you want to play and create. And the cool thing about The Sims 2 being the age that it is and as stable as it is for its age and the community being so active is there's all kinds of things being developed all the time. There's a whole host of mods I don't have in my game that I'm interested in adding and those will include uh, pretty much everything Lazy Duchess has ever done. I think I have a couple of their mods. Um, 
but not not all of them and they've done such amazing work for the community that i do need to get some of those installed uh, but right now i don't and that's you know something i can add on in the future maybe i'll do a second version of this video <laughs> when uh, in a few months time when i've modded even more things i do also you'll have seen it in this um in the catalogue a whole load of these mods these kind of token based mods we've got some school butt mods here for the school and prison systems i have a whole suite of mods or i have those mods that will run those um functions in my save ready to go to be used uh, i've made a whole video about the prison and i will be making a whole video about the school when i build it for my um my bacc right now they're there they're ready to be used i'm looking forward to, to doing it if you want to know more about the school go see t addict's video because that is amazing and is really inspiring so yeah mods i do want to add in the future um I do want to install the RCP launcher by Lazy Duchess, uh, separate for all by Lazy Duchess, uh, more lifetime once, and some other things I think probably they're all on my list for future installation. There's some mods I don't have. Inseminator, Intiminator is one that the ancient lore of The Sims 2 put me off. It didn't seem to be compatible with lots of things at the time, and so I never installed it. I think it does the same things, or it's the same function as ACR and the Sim Blender between those two. Uh, and so I haven't installed it, so I think it's probably fine not to. Tons of mods aren't compatible with Inseminator and Intiminator, I think, in particular. So I don't have those, but they're ones that I'm aware of. I also know about Romantic Standard. That's a very cool mod that overhauls, uh, in, in different ways, the romance and chemistry options in the game. At the moment, it, it makes it harder, is the thing. It makes it more complex, more interesting. At the moment, I'm happy with how things run in my save, so I'm not particularly interested in, in adding those roadblocks. But it's a cool sounding mod. If you don't, if you if ACR doesn't work for you, check out Romantic Standards. Maybe that's a better option for your for your game and the way you want to play. I also used to use Wild Child for like teen pregnancy and more teen wildness in the game. Uh, I took it out. I had one teen pregnancy. I had two total, but one with Wild Child. Uh, no, it wasn't really working for me. I think I had an old version and a new version. It just didn't quite go right. I have everything I need with ACR. I don't always need teen pregnancy to be a feature, so that's fine. That's out at the moment. I also am really interested in trying out the traits mods. The traits overhauls are incredible, but I don't have them in my save. Um, a big part of that is I wouldn't put it in Pleasant View because I have, as of recording, over 200 sims in my save actively. And I'm not going to go through... I wouldn't want to randomise because I know these sims. I wouldn't want to... Are you just going to put on everything that makes noise? Is this what we're going to do? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Let's just get a copyright strike on something. One of them's going to do it. Here you go. You put away his leftovers as single plates. Now he's quieted down. <laughs> Let's have him tend that. So yeah, I do want the traits mod. It seems to add so much variety and depth, but I have too many sims to go through and manage it in Pleasant View. I am thinking about it for Haven Rock. So far, the population is very small and manageable, and I could probably either randomise or figure out what everyone would be with the trait system. So I'm looking at it for that, so I may install that in the future. I don't know. I've gone on this far without it, so maybe I don't need it. Um, but uh, it's, again, such a cool set of mods um, that people have made and developed. And, and the Sims 3 trait system is one of the best best parts of that game I think definitely so it's it's something on my radar to add in the future as is everything Lazy Duchess has ever made so that's <laughs> that's my future plans for mods um, and a hopefully complete list of all the mods I have active at the moment so if you watch my videos everything I've told you is active and running so those are the things that are working in my game maybe change things from the vanilla or how it works in your save your games so I hope that it was helpful <laughs> not just a great big overwhelming list I thought it was a fun thing to do, and I hope you did too. <laughs> if you have any questions, uh, comments, or mod suggestions, please put them in the comments. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next video when we're going back to Haven Rock. Thank you so much for your time for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>